Winnipeg in winter as a tourist destination? Winnipeg is known for its harsh winters with temperatures dropping well below freezing and heavy snowfalls. And it just so happened that on the three days that I visited Winnipeg in February of 2023, the temperatures never crept up above minus 10 degrees Celsius. But aside from that, Winnipeg has winter festivals and attractions worth visiting in winter. During my three days in Winnipeg, I saw my first polar bears. I stepped on the icy Assiniboine River. I ate a maple syrup taffy rolled on snow at the Festival du Voyageur. I was humbled by the exhibits at the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. On my last day, there was a severe weather alert bulletin warning of extreme wind chill values in the minus 40 to 45 range Celsius, significant threat to life or property. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me start at the beginning of this journey. The Alt Hotel in Winnipeg is part of the Germain Hotels Corporation behind the Le Germain, Alt, and Escad brand hotels located across Canada. It is generally known for its modern minimalist design. I booked a standard room with a queen-size bed. And I like the design of the bathroom with a bench seating arrangement. It is also within walking distance of many of Winnipeg's top attractions including the Canadian Museum for Human Rights and the Forks National Historic Site. Looking out of the room's only window, it looks out to the Exchange District, a national historic site which features North America's largest and best preserved collection of heritage buildings. At the time that I was in Winnipeg, the Festival du Voyageur, an annual winter festival, one of the largest in Western Canada, was taking place at the French neighborhood of Saint Boniface, on the east side of the Red River. The festival typically runs for 10 days in February and celebrates Manitoba's fur trading, Métis, Indigenous, and Francophone history. The festival features a wide variety of activities and events, including live music and performances, historical exhibits and displays, traditional foods, and outdoor recreational activities, including snow sculpture contests. One of the main attractions of the festival is Fort Gibraltar, a reconstructed trading post from the early 19th century located in what is now Winnipeg. It serves as the centerpiece of the festival. It offers visitors a glimpse into life during the fur trade era. The reconstructed fort includes a blacksmith shop, a fur trading post and marketplace for supplies and tools, and living quarters, as well as costume interpreters who demonstrate daily life and trades from the early 19th century. Okay. So we have our dried bison meat here that, uh, that uh, I don't know when it's dried, but it's dried earlier. And then we grind it down into a very fine powder. Um, it's not fully powder because it's meat, obviously, so it's still got that weird tactile ta uh, feel. Uh, but then you add bison fat to it, and that meat and fat combined will solidify. And then we have like a bar or, or just like a little a piece of pemmican we can take with us on our trips, uh, or on our, our uh, potage, our travels, potages. I, I can never remember the anglicized version of it. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and then uh, we take it with us, and we not, it's not that we really enjoy eating it, but it definitely gives us enough energy and strength to continue uh, on our lunches. 
Well, then I think it needs to come over to photo. There you go. What's that? <laughs> we made little hand pies in the oven in the big oven today. Oh. Look at this lovely pan. This one is the picture perfect. Almost. We'll just re flatten that one the way it should be. How does it taste? Um, we don't know yet. We'll find out in a few minutes. <laughs> it's venison and blueberry and maple uh, maple sugar as a filling. So it'll be a little bit sweet, but it has sweet in it. And uh, I think they turned out really well. I do. Well, They're super cute. I know, they do. Venison it has that gamey mm -hmm. taste to it, mm -hmm. but yeah. Oh, your bread's good. Yeah, they're not quite there yet. Was that Then it was time for some maple taffy pop, also known as maple taffy on a stick at the Sugar Shack. A traditional Canadian treat made from maple syrup. Hot maple syrup is poured onto clean snow and then rolled onto a popsicle stick as it cools and solidifies. The result is a sweet and sticky candy-like treat that is popular at winter festivals and sugar shacks in Canada. As the afternoon wore on, I took shelter from the cold inside the big tent to watch Saclac perform through music and dance. Composed of Franco-Manitoban and Métis artists, Saclac engaged the audience with their toe-tapping high-energy performance. Activities were ending and it was time to head back to the hotel. As the sun set, I walked towards the Provincial Bridge, which spans the Red River. It links the downtown neighborhood and the Saint Boniface neighborhood. Beside the Provincial Bridge is the pedestrian bridge known as the Esplanade Riel, named for Louis Riel the Canadian politician and founder of the province of Manitoba and a political leader of the Métis people. The following day dawned bright and sunny and very frigid. The weather bulletin called for extreme cold with a range of minus 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. However, there's no such thing as bad weather only unsuitable clothing. So dress for winter. So the sun is shining but it's quite frigid and I'm here at the Assiniboine Zoo. I'm going to check out the uh, Journey to Churchill exhibit. Thank goodness there isn't any wind but it is frigid. Churchill is a small town located on the west coast of Hudson Bay in Manitoba. It is known as the polar bear capital of the world due to the high number of polar bears that migrate through the area every fall. 
It is also a popular destination for viewing the northern lights and for beluga whale watching in the summer. There's a helicopter here. This is to mimic uh, Churchill, this area here. So Churchill would have been would be using helicopters uh, to for for transport. Um, there's a, a boat, there's a kayak that's under, there's ATV, so this mimics Churchill. Manitoba is like where one can visit polar bears in the wild and who knows, maybe even see the aurora borealis, the northern lights. Now that is on the bucket list. The exhibit offers visitors an immersive experience into the Arctic environment. It has an outdoor habitat that stimulates the tundra environment and allows us to observe animals in a more natural setting. This interaction was filmed by another visitor, Linda, just ahead of me. I was that close to observing it myself, but Linda was kind enough to email me this footage to share. The gateway to the Arctic facility also houses a large saltwater aquarium for polar bears, which visitors can view from underneath a 10-foot wide acrylic tunnel. But for today, the harbor seals were the only creatures cavorting in the waters. Polar bears are equipped for survival or on Arctic ice. Once I went back outside on the trail, I then came upon the polar bears out in their compound. This was my first sighting of polar bears in person. It was very exciting. Maybe one day I'll go to the town of Churchill and actually see polar bears out in the wild. I headed towards the Tundra Grill restaurant to seek warmth. What I didn't expect was a great viewing opportunity of the polar bears outside. After the Churchill exhibit, I checked out the other areas of the zoo and thrilled at the sight of the Canadian lynx. The Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep, the Grey Wolf, and the Bison, among other animals. So I'm just finishing my tour of the zoo. It's been mostly outdoors, but it's been so great. The weather has cooperated. It's been very sunny. It's frigid. But because there's no wind, it made it quite bearable. In the afternoon, I made my way to the Forks National Historic Site. The site is located at the junction of the Red and Assiniboine Rivers in the heart of downtown Winnipeg. Indigenous people have used the Forks as a meeting place, fishing camp, trading place and settlement for at least 6,000 years. In the 18th and 19th centuries, European fur traders and settlers began to arrive in the area. The fur trade led to increased contact and trade between indigenous peoples and Europeans. The Métis people are the descendants of these early relationships between European fur traders and indigenous women. Today, the Métis people in Manitoba are recognized as one of the three indigenous peoples of Canada, along with First Nations and Inuit. The Forks is a popular destination for outdoor activities, especially during the winter months when the river freezes over and the skating trail is open. You can rent ice skates at the Forks. This is the river. Wow. Ice. Inside the Forks Market building, there are shops and restaurants. The market offers a wide range of products, including clothing, jewelry, art, books, souvenirs, and more. It also hosts events and activities throughout the year, 
including live music, festivals, and workshops. In winter, you can go down to skate at the forks and then have a hot beverage and meal to warm up afterwards at the market. Near the forks is Union Station. The station serves as a stop for Via Rail's cross-country train, the Canadian, which travels from Toronto to Vancouver. It is a significant landmark in Winnipeg's architectural heritage and has been designated a National Historic Site of Canada. The building's grand entrance hall, high ceilings, and ornate columns are notable examples of Beaux-Arts architecture, and the station's historic importance to transportation in Canada makes it an important part of the country's history as well. Well, today is my final day in Winnipeg. And as you can see, I am dressed for it. The weather forecast is calling for minus 30 with a wind chill. I um, I'm have my all my layers. I've looked out and it's very sunny. It's actually, uh, the sky is blue, the sun is shining, and hopefully they'll at least keep me warm. And I'm looking forward to it. Please jacket on, down jacket on. Well, I'm ready to go out. Although not open to the public when I was there, the exterior facade of the Manitoba Legislative Building was impressive to see. Built between 1913 and 1920, the building's design is a blend of various architectural styles including Beaux-Arts, Classical Revival, and Baroque. The exterior is adorned with many allegorical works of art celebrating wisdom, justice, and courage. The golden boy atop the dome is symbolic of Manitoba's eternal youth and progress. It has a really interesting history and I hope to come back one day for a public tour to see the interior details such as the grand staircase, the rotunda, and the legislative chamber. My last stop was at the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. The museum's mission is to promote respect for human rights and encourage reflection and dialogue on the topic. The building itself is an architectural masterpiece designed by world-renowned architect Antoine Predock, featuring a striking facade made of glass, steel, and stone that was quarried in Manitoba. The museum is known for its powerful storytelling, interactive displays, and immersive experiences that engage visitors and encourage reflection. It focuses on presenting concepts and ideas related to human rights, rather than just displaying artifacts or objects. While the museum does have some artifacts on display such as clothing and documents related to human rights struggles, the focus is primarily on using exhibits, multimedia presentations, and interactive displays to engage visitors with ideas and concepts related to human rights. The exhibits cover a wide range of topics, including the Holocaust, the struggle for indigenous rights, the history of racism and discrimination, the fight for LGBTQ2 plus rights, the legacy of colonialism, slavery and segregation, and the ongoing global refugee crisis. Whether you're a student, a human rights activist, or simply someone who wants to learn more about this important topic, 
The Canadian Museum for Human Rights is an excellent place to start. Even in the depths of winter, my short time in Winnipeg was a memorable, unique experience. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, tap on the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of the next one. Have a great day.